and electric chin. There we go. Awesome. Cool. Now, that takes a little bit more force on Jenna. We know this. She's a little harder to adjust. Hey everybody, Dr. Todd here from Gonset Spine and Wellness. I'm here with Jenna and we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go in more depth and show how we go through an adjustment. In the last video, we went through cervical spine examination. examination. So if you haven't watched that one, make sure you check that out. There'll be a link up here. You can click on, go back and watch that. It's a long one, but we go through the details of how we do a workup on the neck and really the full spine to an extent. We don't show how we take the x-ray. We'll show a couple clips in this video of showing how the x-ray is taken. But before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, turn on your notifications so you can stay in the loop with all the cool content that's coming out, which with a little bit of luck will be several times per week. Right, Jenna? Right. Okay. And also share this, like this video, you know, find other people that you think are gonna benefit from this. Tons of people need this information. So help us spread the word. And we serve two audiences. One is our patients and people who just wanna learn great information to stay healthy for a lifetime. So you can check out how to find out about our clinic if you wanna get checked out here. Also work with chiropractors. We teach them this system called Move Now University. So check that out, movenowu.com if you're a chiropractor. All right, let's get rolling. All right, if you remember on the last video we went through, we did a workup on Jenna. We took x-rays. We have the x-rays up there on that screen. And you'll notice on the x-rays, there are little white dots. Let me just point that out real quick. Little white dots. Those dots were BBs that we taped on the surface of the skin to denote where we found a problem. We found a problem with the instrument, palpation for edema, tenderness, muscle splinting, you know, like small little tightness, spasm, that hypertonicity. And then we put BBs. We said, aha, I think that's where the problem is. We do that so that now when we have the patient in front of us and we're checking them, we have the blueprint and we can put both of these pieces of, of information together. The x-ray findings with the examination findings superimposed on them. Pretty cool. We have this view. It's like looking at Jenna as if we're standing behind her. And then the side view over here. Okay. Now we're checking her out. So this instrument measures temperature from side to side. If it gives me a reading, it tells me where there could be irritation to a nerve. And if I find something, I'll make a little mark with a skin marking pencil. Jen, I'm gonna have you look down with your head. And so this is a, a standard way that we check out a patient. So I'm gliding up and I'm looking to see if there's a reproducible reading. Pretty much stays, oh, there's a little bit of a flicker up top. We'll make a little mark there. I like to go very light up here so that people don't cruise around all day with a red line on their, on their skin. And I've adjusted Jenna many times in the past, so I know that she's got some areas that are pretty consistent. This is what we call a primary subluxation. And a lot of people are just walking around up there where they'll, they'll have various weak links. There's a pretty, pretty good reading right here. And then I have a stool that I like to pull out so that I can be in proper mechanics myself as I'm scoping. If I'm gonna do this nice and slow for demonstration purposes, I don't wanna be bending over the wrong way myself. So a lot of times patients say, oh, that feels good. And then I remind them this is not part of the treatment process. This is the analysis. But I mean, how many times a day do we hear that? We hear that often. All right. Okay, so another reading, I'm gonna keep going. And the funny thing is, sometimes if you scope too slow, you won't see readings. If you scope too fast, you won't see readings. And there is a different speed that you're supposed to go in the neck, the mid back, and the low back, and it has to do with how far apart the segments are spaced and how far apart the spinal nerve roots that come out in between all the vertebra are spaced. But with that said, I will still vary the speed and see how these readings come out. So we got one, two, three, four, little tiny one up top. Pretty much four spots. 
so I'm going to check movement. So I'm laterally bending side to side in the neck and then I'm going into extension. And I'm, I'm looking to see how these joints are moving. Are they moving freely? Are they moving like the segment above and below? This is called motion palpation. And like we talked about in the last video in the cervical spine examination, we talked about how motion palpation is a little bit more relevant in the neck, but it's not a super reliable type of assessment. So seventh cervical, is there any tenderness right there? Not really. Not really. And, and honestly, commonly, the spinous process, that bony prominence on C7, T1, you don't usually elicit a whole lot of tenderness on exam. Way more common to feel tenderness in the thoracic spine, lumbar spine, sacroiliac joints. Cervical spine is usually more tender out on these articular pillars, like out in here. And part of that's because that's where the facet joint is, which is another joint on there. And it's also where there's some overlying musculature that gets pretty tight. So out here, you probably feel it. Like if I came out here, she yes. said, yeah, she said definitely. So this is another way of palpating for motion. But when I'm looking at primarily bending forward and bending back, that's lower neck assessment. And I'm not going to get a whole lot of tenderness unless someone is extremely inflamed. So I'm going to use this prominence now. That's C7, one, two, three, four, three. Compare three to four. four. Compare five to four. four. Okay, so I'm feeling for edema, which feels like a bruise on an apple. So I'm tracing down a little bit of pressure and I fall into a little dip right there. So there's edema right there. So that is our winner, winner, chicken dinner, that one. One, two, three. Well, tell me again, four, five, four, five. It, cool. It's close. Yeah. So I actually feel more on edema five. on this lower one. Okay. So I'm, it's a little bit more tender on five, I'm changing five. my mind, which I have the right to do that. Okay. And th this process is honing in on segments. We, we document, we note what we find, what we work on. We see how our patient responds. And then if they do well, we can reproduce that. If they don't and we're missing something, we can move on. And that's part of the case management process. And then we also turn back to the x-ray and sometimes the x-ray will help us decide between one segment and the next. That will be the deciding factor in certain situations. That's tender, that's L5. Okay, there's many ways of, of motioning the SI joints. I know just from Jenna's history, it's primarily L5. L5 showing up today, we're gonna set L5. So, one, two, three, four, five. Nine, five. So seven, five, nine, five, it's four segments. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust Jenna. And then after the adjustment, I'll go through and I'll explain some more stuff on x-ray as far as some of this. So C7, T5, T9, L5. So this is very important in the Gonstead work that the way that we adjust the spine, it's based on the integrity of the disc and the mechanics of how the joint moves and how Dr. Gonstead understood that the joint subluxates. So I'll grab a little model here. This is a lumbar model, but if the vertebra subluxates backwards and down if it goes posterior inferior the main way that we want to set this is we want to lift and set that vertebra up and forward we're not focusing on the rotation or the twisting component all that much like a lot of other techniques do we're focusing on the back to front component okay that's what makes this method particularly different in how we adjust so the neck a lot of methods will take a patient, put them face up on a table and twist side to side. We're doing this in the seated position. So if you've been to other chiropractors before and you say, oh, that looks different. This is one of the hallmark things that makes a Gonstead adjustment different. Now my goal is that as I adjust C7, I'm gonna lift and set the bone forward. My goal is that her head should do this. It should come forward. If it looks like she's throwing spit against the wall, then I'm doing what's called a seated rotary break. 
meaning I'm not doing this and twisting. If this twists, if my arm comes this way and her nose goes this way, that's a no-no. We were very meticulous about learning this technique when we were in school and training at the seminars and us fine tuning our skills, doctor to doctor. So let's see how we do. We're gonna set this forward. What should happen is her nose should come up. Now, first things first, this chair, there's a strap here. The strap is here for a reason and it will help me with Jenna because she's a little bit tinier. So lift that left arm up. This is gonna go across here, kind of like seatbelt, holds her in position. All right, this is helpful. It allows me to use less force when I'm adjusting this segment. I'm going to contact right underneath C7 with the tip of my finger. So tip of my finger on this hand. Patient positioning, if you wanna just put your feet out in front of you, heels to the ground, toes up to the sky, palms up in the lap, nice and relaxed. All right, and be as loose as you can. Let it go, okay, cool. Let her relax and lift your chin. There we go, awesome, cool. Now, that takes a little bit more force on Jenna. We know this. She's a little harder to adjust. Most patients, we can do that lighter, but how did that feel? Really good. Okay, cool. So it might look a little bit more intense or a little more brutal than it actually is, but I'm isolating that joint and setting it forward. That was a really clean adjustment. It was a solid clunk. So meaning it wasn't a bunch of clicking and high-pitched noises of the facet joints moving. It was setting this joint at the core of the joint which the goal is to really impact the disc. Okay, I'm gonna have you come on up over here. All right, so this is called a high-low table. Table goes down. And this is nice because a patient can come up off the table when we bring the table up and not have to climb off the table, which could potentially impact or ruin the adjustment. And if someone's really acute, they're in a lot of pain, it's hard for them to climb on and off a table, so it's nice to have a table like this. Go ahead and let your hands fall all the way down to the floor. Okay, so this is T5. And the nice thing is every time we see a patient, we have their x-ray up, we have their blueprint, we know the shape of the bone, the anatomy, and we can make sure that we're accurate with our palpation as far as identifying what segment we're on. I'm gonna count down to T5. And we know as well that Jenna is tough to adjust at T5. Jenna is not, she's not tough to adjust all over, but neck and upper thoracic, not so easy. I'm gonna set this with what's called a nail point two contact, which is this part of my hand. So fifth metacarpal phalangeal joint, okay? So I'm gonna get right underneath T5 spinous. Just let that drop all the way down. Loose, loose hands all the way to the floor. Good, not too bad. All right, good job. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is T9. And I'm looking up to the x-ray because that tells me the listing or the way that the vertebra is misaligned. So I know, I know the actual vector the direction that I need to set that bone to get the best correction. Oh yeah, and then also too, Jenna's kind of an, an awkward one in the sense that usually prone L5 adjusting is something that we do not typically with, you know, a 20 something year old female, but Jenna adjusts better here. So we're gonna set L5 prone. Normally we do this like in the sideline position or the prone position would be for someone that's a little bit older or bigger, so Jenna's just an old soul. It's all right, Jenna, okay. So this is L5. We're gonna lift and set this up and forward is the goal on L5. L5, right over here, okay. All right, real loose, let it go. Legs loose, a little more, good. All right, very good. That was it, so. That is a standard adjustment that we're doing on Jenna. Very specific, four different levels. How'd that go? Felt really good. <laughs> awesome, okay, cool. All right, don't tell me, tell them. 
It felt great. I needed that. <laughs> cool. So anyway, that concludes going through the adjustment portion. And then in just a second, I'll go through a little more of the x-ray analysis. We will round this out. And then a video in the future that we're going to do before Jenna goes and gets changed and steps out of this is we're going to go through a case management video. So we're going to explain how we're going to go and manage rehabilitating the curve of your neck, looking at the functional movement aspect of things, and putting this all together so that our viewers out there can understand how this comprehensive approach of segment, posture, and movement are all addressed. Today, we address segment. This little piggy is the one that we addressed today. Okay, cool. Thanks, Jenna.